So let's talk about private WAN first, right? So when customer says I have a private WAN circuit versus a public WAN circuit, what does that mean? So let me demystify that for you. Let's say we have two locations, San Jose Data Center and New York Data Center. If we end up procuring a dark fiber circuit from our service provider, that would actually be a layer one dark fiber circuit. Now, the beauty of this circuit is that it's fully dedicated. It's like as if we had literally a fiber optic buried in the ground between San Jose and New York, completely dedicated to us. Nobody else using that circuit. Now, that is very cool, but at the same time, it's the most expensive type of circuit you can have because a service provider has to give you a dedicated infrastructure that is not shared with anybody else. So you pay premium top dollars for that. The next level up could potentially be a VPLS service, which stands for Virtual Private LAN Service. It's a shared service within the service provider backbone and you end up you know, getting a circuit from them. It could be a 10 meg circuit, 100 meg, gig, 10 gig, whatever have you. But VPLS is basically a giant layer two network. So all the sites that are part of the VPLS can actually exchange MAC addresses. Now, that being said, typically there's a limit of how many MAC addresses each of your sites can pump into the service provider network because they have limitations on their provider edge and core, but that's a topic for another day. Now, keep things simple. It's a layer two circuit. Next level up could potentially be MPLS, which stands for multi-protocol label switching type of circuit. Once again, different bandwidths, um, but, the, but the bottom line is it's a layer three circuit. So here you don't do MAC exchange. Here you have to configure IP addressing on your customer edge routers in order to be able to communicate. And all of the sites that become part of the MPLS, you may have a full mesh set up so all the sites can talk to each other but it doesn't have to be a full mesh. You can ask your service provider to set it up any, any way you want. Some people have partial mesh, some people have hub and spoke, whatever have you. And the other item, which is the other side of the spectrum, is the public WAN, and that is the internet. And it's layer three only. When you go to your service provider and you go, I want a public WAN circuit, they can only sell it to you as a layer three circuit. And there are two categories within public WAN. One is DIA. It stands for dedicated internet access. It's the most expensive type of internet circuit you can get, but cheaper than MPLS or VPLS or uh, the dark fiber, of course. Here, the infrastructure within the service provider network is shared. However, what's nice about the DIA circuit is that it offers business class SLA. So things like packet loss, latency, jitter, mean time to repair, meaning when things go down, your service provider will be able to get, get it all up and running within a certain time frame. There are all those promises made. And if they can't keep their end of the bargain, there are financial penalties, meaning they have to give you a discount on your service for that month if they can't meet their SLA. So it's pretty serious. Typically for my customers that have a really big operation, I recommend that they actually have DI circuits at their key locations. DI circuits are expensive, but at the same time, what I like the most about them is that they're symmetrical in nature, right? So if you get a 10 gig DIA, that's 10 gig up and 10 gig down. Now the next level below DIA is broadband. And broadband comes in different flavors. You got your DSL or cable or 4G, 5G type of connectivity. It's one step below DIA. Even if you end up buying quote unquote business class broadband, it's not much different than getting a broadband for your home. With broadband, you get best effort SLA. It's not nearly as good as the DIA SLA as far as packet loss, latency, jitter, 
mean time to repair, those type of things. You don't actually get anything fancy with broadband. The big plus is it's low cost. It's very cheap to buy broadband circuits. And what you get with broadband circuits is high download, low upload. Now for businesses, that could be an issue. That's why typically at least at data centers, you would definitely wanna get DIA type circuits and then your branch locations, you can get away with buying a bunch of broadband circuits and kind of bundle them together and let the SD-WAN appliance do its magic. And that's the beauty of it. And that wraps up today's video. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.